I've heard so much negative feedback about it. Yeah. Guys really bash it. And because it's frustrating, right? That That is frustrating. Our, our inner person does not enjoy feeling like they have to be a walking encyclopedia. So I need to, I, I, I need to push you because yeah. I, I, I've got like this loop that I have to close. What is the number one, or what is the, if you could only choose one cert, what would it be? And I'm sorry to push you. It's just your opinion. Again. Yeah, just my opinion. What would you choose? Man. You, you're, on, you're stuck on an island. You, you, the, only way off, the only way off is to choose one cert. If, what I, if I'm going to go with one cert, I'm going to go. Hey everyone, it's David Bombal back with another interview, but in this case, I've got Daniel. Daniel, I could introduce you, but it's probably better if you do it yourself. So could you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Sure, David. Thanks for having me on. This is a, a real pleasure. Like you got such a cool podcast or YouTube channel. You get so much great content. So I'm Daniel Lowry. I work for um, IT Pro TV. I'm what we call an edutainer. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hopefully that kind of gives away the idea behind what I do, I instruct on cybersecurity. That's my my specialty, my silo, as it were. And I try to do that in a way that's fun and engaging instead of, I'm sure everybody out there has had to, at one point, deal with the voiceover PowerPoint awesomeness that is most online IT training. Wasn't a huge fan of that, so uh, my friends got together. They built this little company and they asked me to jump on the ship. I said, hey, what the heck? And here I am, and now I try to inform the masses of cool IT training that I can give to you and then get you in there and get you learned up with all the skills that you're going to need to get into cybersecurity. I know that's a, a hot thing right now, and it's a lot of fun. I know I enjoy it, so I, I, I totally understand the appeal of it. But Okay, Daniel, now I'm going to push you. Okay. So now you're, you're ready for some fire. All right, I'm going to take a sip here. You go for it. Okay, so you mentioned a bunch of certifications, and there are a bunch out there, uh, like Security Plus, um, there's CH. Um, you can you can go through the basic list again, but you tell me now. Okay, what are the yeah. most sorry? What are the entry level certifications, and yep. which one would you recommend as the first certification? That's a that's a great question. So I'm going to push um, you. I'm going to push you now. You're going to push me. This is a good push question because it's very relevant, right? And it is is the probably the question people have on their minds. Okay, tell me. I'm I'm, I'm poised to jump. Just tell me where to jump to. And I'm going to go and I'm going to tackle it. I'm going to kill it. I'm going to get that cert so that I can I can really start making some headway into my career. I get that. Uh, the answer to that is, in my opinion, probably the best entry-level certification if you're going toward an offensive security style. Uh, you know, this would be for a SOC analyst or anything like this would be, I want to be a pen tester one day. I want to do vulnerability yep. assessments. Ultimately, maybe get into real red team engagement kind of things. I would probably start off with with eLearn security. They have they have great great certifications. The certification and and here here's what I would say why I would say that. Is that the EP, e, EJPT? E, EJPT yeah? would be the the certification. Yes, from EJPT. Okay, so you're actually putting that above like Security Plus or CH or Pentest Plus, yeah? Yeah, and I can say that now because after having I do training for Security Plus, I think it's it's great. You got to understand, like, none of these things are are static. They're they're all dynamic. Everything's always changing. Security Plus. I've just finished the update to Security Plus with another educator here, Wes Bryant. He he is the SME on that. I'm just kind of there to host and support him and give him that because yep. he he helps people. You know, I just want to say that for the for people who don't know um, IT Pro TV, what's really nice about the way you guys do it versus like a lot of training is you, there's always two of you, isn't there? And like one person is like teaching the other, which is, makes it very interactive. Is that right? I feel like we should be like, you know, old style, like- Rock em, sock em yeah, robots. Yeah, here we go. Right, because right. uh, we're, we're trying to do what we're having right now and then yeah. just make that training. Think of how much yeah. better you learn just listening to a podcast and picking up random, you know, pieces of information. We just try to like move that into a very uh, information rich environment and that becomes your training instead of, Okay, let's go through the five phases of pen testing, yeah. whatever it is. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. that that's not boring, fun. Yeah. That's not engaging. That is boring. We do we are not people that like to be bored here. And we don't want you to be bored. We want you guys to have fun. We want you to learn. We want to get our hands into stuff. So we we like to show things as often as we possibly can. Of course, there's always going to be those theory uh, elements to stuff, but 
when you but i need to, I, I need to push you sorry I, yeah. I i interrupt i interrupted you sorry so yeah. you were saying ejpt is the is the certification of choice so, so explain to me why I, I would say because for two reasons ejpt is very much a it basically is kind of like security plus and um ceh kind of wrapped up in a ball right without the filler now i will i'm going to qualify that that phrase filler here in just a second. I say filler, okay? It is, is very pointed is what I mean. It is saying, you want to be a pen tester. Let's test you on pen testing things, right? That's their focus. That's their motivation. And the exam, I've, I've never come out of an exam booth before going, that was fun. I, That's amazing. Eh? I yeah, because normally it's like, thank goodness it's over. Yeah, I usually come out going, well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same verbiage, yeah. different, like obviously different meanings there. Uh, that experience was great. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I look forward to doing more e-learn security certifications for myself personally, just because they have a great track. If you're into pen testing, it's a phenomenal track to get into. Does that mean they're the only game in town or like CEH is out the window and they're, they'll be boarding up shop within six months because e-learn security hit the, hit the scene? No, absolutely not. Because their CEH has done a great job of marketing themselves and making yeah. themselves a certification that has industry recognition. EJP. Yeah, so it's like a gate. It's a gatekeeper type cert, isn't it? To yeah, get it, you it the totally is. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, I like that terminology. That this is something that an HR person would probably put in a offensive or even defensive security, and it does have its place. Because if you look at, I would say most people will say one of the big problems with CEH is the, how massive it is. So I've got. Yeah, the, I've heard you. Say, I've heard you say previously that the, the amount of you were surprised that there's so much content. Is, is is that right? Yes, it's it's tons and tons of con, uh, of, of content. So uh, that is is part of what makes it a difficult certification, a moderately difficult certification to pass, because you got to know a bit about a lot of it, right? So there's there's tons of stuff and you gotta know something about everything. And they're gonna hammer you on on minutia. They're gonna, oh, which Nmap switch does X, Y, or Z? Well, yeah, which, which kind of seems pointless because in the real world, you're not gonna, you're gonna, that's why you go Google or you got documentation, yeah? It's funny you say that. I, but I mean, Cisco do the same. Well, they used to do the same, yeah. yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, well, I, 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 would, I would love to see the day when certification exams are, yeah, you can use anything you want. You know, and I, I did see that with eLearn Security. They you use anything you want. You use Google anything you like. You don't have an exam proctor because what's the reason of proctoring it? You can use any resource you can get your hands on. So is it like a practical exam? Sorry. Yes, it's a, it is a practical exam. Thank you for that clarification. Whereas CEH is a more traditional exam based off of a body of knowledge. Yeah, it's, right. like, it's like multiple guess, yeah? Right. Now... <laughs> We're talking about CEH, and if you look up CEH, is it worth it, that kind of thing, the exam itself can be a bit of a bear because it's large. You know, I think it's 100-something, 120-something questions or, or something like that. It's, it's a pretty big exam. It takes time. You got to know minutia things that you can't Google that you would be like, oh, man, if I was in the real world, I'd be Googling this. And these, yeah, are, exactly. all the, these are all the negative feedbacks that you hear about CEH. I've heard so much negative feedback about it. Yeah. Guys really bash it. And because it's frustrating, right? That That is frustrating. Our, our inner person does not enjoy feeling like they have to be a walking encyclopedia yeah. of, uh, you know, a walking body of knowledge. We all have a, a walking body of knowledge, but maybe not to the depth where we outsource a lot of that to the internet, to books, to references, instead of keeping it in our head. And that, that's, just, that's just how the world works now. That said, if you look at CEH, what do they offer right now? If, we, if, if we're judging CEH based off of CHV10 and not looking at CHV11, which is their current standing. Yeah, well, I wanted to ask you about 11 because they've, yeah. that's a new, that, that got released a few months ago, yeah? Right. And that, that, that would be doing, that, that wouldn't be fair to EC Council to judge. Them. Not that it doesn't play a part, but to solely base our, our estimation of what the CEH11 uh, version is just based off of the the prior uh, versions and the prior performances and the prior uh, people's experience with it, that, that would not be a completely fair thing to do. So EC Council, to their credit, has seen their competitors 
you learn security, offensive security. Um, what's the other? Uh, there's just tons of them out there now. A lot of a lot of certifications are starting to pop up. Uh, even yeah. CompTIA has gotten in the game. They got Pentest Plus. So what are they doing that's giving them so much success? And they're starting to emulate that. So if I'm if I'm looking at CHV11, I'm looking at the content. I'm I'm now looking at a much more uh, true comparison, a more of an apple to apple instead of apples to oranges with its competitors out there. Now, maybe not in the way that the exam is administered, right? That, but they have also come out with a different... They, they, this is where people get fun with marketing. They're trying to make more money. I get it. Here, make more money if you can. But they have the CEH practical exam. Yeah, what, what is that? that? What is that? So that Sorry, what, what, what is that? So what is that about? That's meant to be the practical performance-based exam that they now offer to say, okay... You know, we see you, we hear you. Everybody out there wants to get their hands on something and prove that they can do X, Y, or Z. And probably they were getting slayed by OSCPs and the EJPTs of the world. Uh, so they thought, hey, we can do that too. And so they spun that up, and now you have the the CEH practical exam. So you have like so CEH per se is just a theory based type of exam, yeah. Yeah. Like a, the typical theory, you know. I always say multiple guess as a joke. So they're yeah. one of those type of exams. And then the practical is, is kind of like EJPT or OSCP. Obviously, not the same level as OSCP, but it's a practical type exam. Is that right? Yes, it is a practical type of exam. You're going to log into some some lab environments. I think it might be done via like a web browser uh, kind of thing. I've taken some exams that are like that where you get a web browser, you go to the link, you get basically like what looks like an RDP session via the web. Yeah, like a jump post type thing. Yeah, there you go. And... Um, they're, they're going to give you some some tasks to perform, and you, you fill them out. You do that, and there you go. You get your certification if you're able to actually complete the task they ask you to complete, which is great. Good for them. They saw that, hey, we're not strong in this. We need to we need to come up in the world and show that we are still a competitor in this space, and they're trying to be competitive by offering those things. It's a bolt-on solution, but it's still a solution. They haven't not heard the voices crying in the darkness saying, hey, <laughs> you know, I got this CEH thing and people are making fun of me. You know, they're yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah, no, let's let's help you out with that. Let's get that. Is, that, that, is, that is to their credit, yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel like we do tend to get a bit tribalistic, maybe, if, <laughs> yeah. if that's a good word to use, about, you know, mm, CEH bad, you know, uh, not my tribe, you know, because... People get very black and white and get very vocal about right. what they believe. You yeah. also have to understand what CEH is meant to do. I... I don't believe that, maybe it was when it began, but at this point, the CEH, the, the regular CEH exam is meant to kind of give you that. That's why it's such a large body of knowledge. You need to know a bit about everything. If you're going to be that security person that wears that hat plus system administrator, you're, you're trying to do that. It can be a really good certification for that. Where, Just to give you like a, a foundation of knowledge. Yeah. Right? I, I don't have to go get Security Plus, right? I do need to have some understanding of how certain technologies work. There is some prerequisite knowledge there where I need to understand Windows operating systems. I do need to understand even some Linux operating system. I need to understand mobile technology, maybe some cloud and, and things of that nature. But now I'm just starting to, once I go from there, I start to dive into the idea of, okay, what does security governance look like? Because they, they talk about that kind of stuff inside the, the training. They talk about the standard vulnerability assessment and risk management, all a part of standard security stuff that you would learn in, in Security Plus. And so maybe you're like, yeah, I want that Security Plus experience, but I'm, I'm really interested in, in the, the more offensive side of things, maybe learn a bit more about that world. CEH is a great certification for that because it does have a ton of stuff and you've got this these huge books that they give you because I think it's like over 3,000 pages of information. Wow. And now you've got a set of references that sit on your shelf as they should. Again, we're outsourcing that knowledge. Is it a bear to go in and take that test and try to remember all those things? Yeah, but you can think of it as a challenge. Gamify that, right? And, and right, go back to our previous part of the conversation. It's an HR gatekeeper. There is value to that exam. There is value to that certification. There are people out there, and let, let me put it in these terms. If I go to a job board and I see on a job that I think is perfect for me and their qualifications are, include certifications such as CEH, Pentest Plus, OSCP, EJPT, or you know, whatever, and I've got a CEH sitting in my pocket, 
I will tell you, CEH is an easier exam than OSCP. And if it gets me past the same wall, right, you start to see it. We're hackers, right? Gamify this. It's a game. So, I, I, I want to push you. Sorry, man. Yeah. I want to. I, I want to push you now. So first, cert EJPT. Yeah. Yeah. Then you you recommending uh, look at CH to get past the gatekeepers because from what I've seen, um, the problem with EJPT, it's a great cert, but it's not well known enough to get past a lot of gatekeeper type stuff. Even though you know perhaps you can you you can talk to them and get past it, but if you just want to ch- you know get past the the check boxes and stuff right. and the recruitment agents, CH is a great way to, to get past that. Okay, so are you saying do those two and then what would you do? Or are you saying do a- a- EJPT and then go to OSCP? I'm sorry, Daniel, to push you on this. I just want to yeah. try and get a, a nice path for people to follow. Yeah. Like, what would you do today? You know, if if you were starting out or I was starting out, what would you do? So EJPT, then CH, is that right? And then maybe OSCP, or, or what would you say? So depending on what I want to do, if, if you're saying, see, this this is where it starts to get down into the minutia, where it starts to deviate from a, here is the way to, here is here is a way, okay? If you're saying, I want to be a pen tester, then I would push you EJPT. If you're saying, I want to be a general security practitioner with an emphasis in the offensive side of security, then I would say go uh, CEH, right? Oh, okay. So are you saying, so let me just clarify that because that's a great way to put it. So if I want to be red team, pen tester, EJPT is your first cert. But if you want to be like blue team or um, just have general knowledge, then CH. Is that what you're saying? Right. Or, or maybe if you're running like purple team, where you're you're kind of doing blue team and, and, and red team things, That's it, the, all of that is encompassed under your job description, or that's your role uh, in some way, shape, or form, where you are the person that is not only responsible. Well, ultimately, people have to understand that red team's job is to, uh, f- what's the word I'm looking for? To make the blue team uh, uh, capabilities more robust, right? Yeah. Help them find, way to put it, right. yeah. Help them yeah. find the flaws in what they're doing so that they can shore those up, make it stronger, make it faster, make it leaner, meaner, and tougher for the adversaries out there that are looking to get into their systems. It's fun to pop shells. It's fun to hack through a system, but at the end of the day, that's not my job as a red teamer, as an yeah. offensive, as a pen tester, as a vulnerability assessor. That's not my job. My job is to find the weaknesses in a system, find out whether or not they're exploitable, then go back to the people that built that system and say, hey, man, I found some, I found some weakness in your fence here. Let me show you some ways in which we can make that work a whole lot better so that guys like me can't find, or, or girls, as it may be, might find their way through that. At the end of the day, and I've said this in conferences, I've said this on countless different ways, the end of the day, red team's job is to make blue team win. Blue team eventually yeah. should be winning the game because yeah, if it's a great not, way to, I like what I like what you said there. Yeah. We we have to think about these things more philosophically than we do. Uh, yeah, because everyone's like, I want to hack, I want to yeah. hack. But I mean, <laughs> at the end of the day, what pays the bulls or gets you a job is to protect a company. In right. in a lot of cases, I mean, obviously there are exceptions, but right. the the most jobs are protecting companies. So I, I like the, the way you put that. Yeah. yeah. What is the yeah. value yeah. that you bring to the company? Uh, I always tell people like. If you're if you're going red team side of things, what is the deliverable, the thing that the, the company pays? Let's say you're a let's say you're a pen tester, and uh, you've been hired to do an engagement. What's the deliverable at the end of that engagement? It's a report. Well, what's in that report? Yeah. Here's yeah. your weaknesses. Here's how we did it. Here's how you fix it. If you need help, you know maybe that was a part of our agreement. If it's not, we can bolt that on, and come in and help. At the and maybe even do a reassessment to verify that those security controls are now working, right? This is the job of a of a pen tester. This is what they do. This is their purpose in life. Red team, real true red team engagements are to kind of even go further than that as far as like we are going to be basically become a specific type of threat. We're going to model ourselves after based off of your organization and. We are going to act as a true APT against your company and, and see if we can't make some way so that you can better threat model what might actually come down your your way. And again, for the sole purpose of the blue team eventually winning the game. So if you, like think, that, yeah. if you think that, oh, I'm going to get in a red team because I like hacking. Yeah, that's super awesome and it is fun to do. But that is a small subset of what you what you do in the entirety of the business. So do you need to know hacking stuff? Do you need to learn those hacking 
skills? Absolutely. Is that fun? Absolutely. It is so much fun. But if you just want to have a good time and know some hacking stuff, cool. Welcome to the community. Go grab a CTF, sign up for Hack the Box, and have a good time and enjoy hacking and popping shells. You can just totally do that. And then maybe as you mature in your understanding of what that does and how you can play that, maybe you then start to move toward that side of things. And as you see, I go, oh, you know what? I think I could be a real asset to a company if I was employing these skills that I've learned uh, or these certifications that I've gained. Because I always think of them as a, as a challenge, right? I want to challenge myself. Let me, ta- let me take some training. Let me see if I can get a cert. If I didn't, at the very end of the day, did I at least learn something? Did I take something away from that? Did I improve myself? Did I make myself more marketable if that's what I'm trying to do? So I didn't gain the certification. I gained a lot of experience. I can make that experience a part of my resume. I need to be doing things that aren't certification uh, related as well, like Hack the Box. Yeah, I, want to, I want to push you on that because you mentioned Hack the Box and stuff. So what's your opinion on certs versus Hack the Box and you know Try Hack Me, stuff like that? Some people are like really focused on certs. Um, are you saying like you should do certs and that, or how would you spend your time basically? Yeah, it is, it is a both end, I would say. Uh, a, because you can get burned out when you're working on certifications. You're going to kind of bounce in and out of either side of that that coin where you're going to be like, okay, I got I to gotta work on my certification. So I got to carve some time out. I want to get this cert. It has some value in the in the uh, industry. So I want to do this as a, as a profession. So I'm going to get that cert. So I'm going to spend some time working on gaining the knowledge I need to gain that cert. Depending on the certification you're working on, Doing things like Hack the Box, Try Hack Me, Vuln Hub, whatever, can help make that learning experience a, a true practicum. Something that I've, I've not only engaged in with my head, but with my person. I've, I've done it. I've got experience in it. It might not be a true representation of the real world, but it was a, it was a challenge. I had to apply the knowledge in a real way and use that so they can definitely bolster themselves out. A lot of times I find myself jumping back over to, to doing things like try hack me or whatever, uh, because it's fun, right? It's, it's kind of a go back to the idea. I like hacking cause it's fun and yeah. let's, let's just have a good time. Yeah. And you know what I find what happens is I learn a ton of stuff that way. I, I do a new challenge that new, maybe a new box drops on hack the box and I go, Oh, I got to do some Google in here. And all of a sudden I'm taking all those methods that I learned in a, maybe a certification training and I'm applying it to trying to hack through this. And now I'm taking the experience that I learned there and I'm going back to my certification going, oh, that's where this, okay. And everything starts to work together. So a lot of times, again, going back to the red team idea that, yeah, these things are great um, partners that they go together like chocolate and peanut butter a lot of times. There are so many of these great resources <laughs> where you're able to take that you must be an American, chocolate oh, yeah. and peanut butter. All right. Have you had it? It's awesome. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. But I mean, that's great. So I mean, you basically those two go together, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. certs and and um, the practical stuff. And not only that. Sorry, I, I interrupted you. Go on. No, I was going to say. Well, I, I like where you're going with that because it brings us back around to the idea of it, it's. Let me put it this way: I'm I go for a job, right? I apply. I've got a cert. Put the cert of choice in that in that ball. They go, cool, that's great. What else you got? Uh, well, I got the cert. Okay. But, you know, what are you doing to show me that? You can actually do it. Right. Yeah. That this is something that you're engaged in. Something that, like, a lot of people can just hunker down and go, I'm going to go get a cert. Ingest that information. Go take the certification. Get the cert. And now now what? You know, we, the people out there that I'm seeing, like, before COVID hit, and we were able to actually go face-to-face in conferences and and do some meet and greet and talk in that way. And even still now in, in, the, in the digital way in which we interact, you see that people, they like certs. They, it helps with, like you say, the HR gatekeeping to get the right people in front of the right people. But at the end of the day, they want to see the aptitude. They want to see the passion yeah, because yeah, they know- passion, the love for it. Right, yeah. that person is going to be a phenomenal employee. All you got to do is give them the resources that they need and get out of their way and let them do the job. And you're going to be so happy that's what you did. So put them with somebody that's been doing it for a hot minute. They know the ins and outs of the work. Hey, here's the new person. They're going to shadow you for the next month. And you're going to help them get up to speed. 
And that's honestly, that should be just about any job, right? You need to, you need to work under someone that knows what they're doing because everything's new to us at one point in time. You might understand the concepts. You might have even done some of it before, but it doesn't mean that's necessarily how we do it here, right? You might need to just understand their workflow and do it because that's how they like it done. That's cool. Go get that done. Work under somebody. I like that mentorship uh, model. Even if yeah. uh, you're trying to, to just learn, somebody that has walked those steps ahead of you is you, you'll come to find most people are more than happy to share that knowledge with anybody that is passionate, shows a true interest and willingness to do the hard work. That's, and that's, a, that's another really great point. But, to but you make a good point about, you know, you mustn't just take any job. I mean, unless you have to. I like that thing about you, you don't want to be the cleverest guy in the room. Oh, no. Or girl in the room. You want to be the the person that's a few steps below, so that you can learn from others around you. Yeah, I I, I want to grow like mentorship, myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you're fine. I, I want to grow myself. Uh, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. In a lot of places, uh, sometimes I am. Sometimes I'm not. And when I am, I'm trying to give that knowledge to other people. Like if you come to right. IT Pro TV. It, Sorry, yeah. Daniel. I want to take you back to the certs because you you yeah. gave us like sort of two parts, like EJPT for red team. Yeah. Um, CEH is like gatekeeper slash, you know, more generalist type knowledge. Um, are there any other certs? Because I, I also want to push you on Security Plus and Pen Test Plus. Yeah. But I mean, what would you, so let's let's start with that. What about those certs? Would you recommend not doing those and just going straight to uh, EJPT, CH? And then what comes after, like o, OECP perhaps? But let's start with, you know, Security Plus, Pen Test Plus. Sorry, I want to push you because yeah. it's, it's nice to get someone of your knowledge and like put you in the hot seat if you like. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Heat it up, Hit, light the fire, right? Uh, <laughs> so I, I think that... We find ourselves trying to, to focus in and say, which one? It's not which one, right? It's how do I get all this? Because Security Plus has, like Security Plus is an 80, um, 8570 compliant for the DOD, the United States government. That will get you in the door of a lot of government work, just having Security Plus. If you're in the military and you need to be able to do X, Y, or Z job, that is a KSA. Right? And it's it's cheaper than than CH, by, isn't it? Yeah, by far. Oh my goodness! And it's in, it's easier, I suppose, because yeah, you don't have it, the it, three thousand pages or whatever you have yeah. to learn. It's still a pretty good um, body of knowledge, but yeah, it's nowhere near the tome that is CEH. Uh, but I don't just want security. I I want security plus. I want pen test plus. I want CEH. I want EJPT. I I want them all. Right? I'm, they're like Pokemon to me. Uh, you gotta gotta catch them all. In because it makes me more marketable. The more that I'm doing, the more that I'm engaged with the community, and if that be through certification, showing my passion because I don't want to ha have an air of arrogance like uh, Security Plus is beneath me, right? Yeah. It could apply. That, that might be the thing that gets me the job. Maybe they're like, oh, man, they got the Security Plus. I know what that is. Like, let's bring them in. You know? Oh, they I, I like what you said. I mean, it's, I mean my, my counter to you would be time and money. Time and money like, do play, yes, time and money. So, you know, that's why I'm kind of pushing you. Like, you know, if I'm short on time, short on money, short um, on time, which short do I go? Money, I would go um, EJPT because it's it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, by far less, it's like half as expensive as CEH. It's very geared toward pen testing. So if that's where you want to go, it's, that's that's perfect. And would do fine for you if you were wanting to, if you had to be that security person and know something about the, the offensive side of things, it would be just fine for that as well. Um, Pentest Plus, also another very viable uh, alternative, very strong showing. Let me put it this way. I didn't hate taking the Pentest Plus certification exam. <laughs> but you loved EJPT. I, I loved EJPT, but I didn't hate Pentest Plus. I thought it was a great, especially for their first foray into offensive security red team side of things. I thought it was a very strong showing for them to come out of the gate with that. Did a great job. I think it's a very practical exam, even though it's not a practical exam. So which would you choose, uh, Security Plus or Pen Test Plus? Sorry to keep putting you on the spot. It's just time yeah. and money, you know? Give me, give me, a, give me like, if just I'm, your opinion. If you know, I'm just you... starting out, I would go Security Plus. If I was, if I had some, some time in the grass, I know a bit about security, you know, maybe foundationally, I would go Pen Test Plus. If I, you know, I might not have had a security certification, but I've, I've kind of messed around with it. I know a bit about it. You, you probably got the wherewithal to jump into 
a, a pen test plus and, and be successful. Okay, here's a nasty question. Okay. I like to ask this question. So, so yeah. get ready. I like it. <laughs> what is the best cybersecurity ethical hacking certification? Like if you only could pick one, I what would you pick? And is that, it OSCP? That's or? a tough one. So o is. OSCP has a lot of positives. OSCP yep. has um, industry recognition, HR gatekeeping kind of idea going behind it. It's it's very it's practical. I say very practical. It is practical. Yep. Uh, it's probably a top of the entry level, bottom of the mid tier. Just from my experience, what I've seen, a lot of people consider OSCP to be an entry level certification. It it's is interesting that that people say I've heard that as well. People yeah. say it's it's like entry level, mid level. I mean, it's not something you would recommend as your first search. Is that right? Yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend it for a lot of people's first cert. It would depend on the person if I was going case by case, but generally, no. Um, you do need to understand a lot of, they, they assume a lot of knowledge, right, at that point. So, and then you get to the exam itself, and the exam itself is- It's a beast. Uh. Well, it's a beast because it's a big puzzle, right? It's, it's five big puzzles. One, one, one of the um, uh, exam boxes. This is all well-known information from us. I'm not giving away their secret sauce or anything, but there's going to be a buffer overflow challenge that you have to create a a very basic um, exploit. A couple of twists and turns in there that you, anybody that you know just sits there and thinks. But most of it is designed to be kind of like a CTF, and CTFs are basically like little hacking puzzles, and they can be like wicked frustrating, especially when you're under a time crunch and you're like you've spent some money and you don't want to fail. So that's probably the negative aspect of the OSCP. You can, it's, it's a rite of passage almost at that point because <laughs> yeah. it, it was a really hard thing. You stuck your hands in the, in the bullet ant mitts and you didn't scream for 24 hours and you came out and you, you, you did it. Good for you. you know? So that's why it's, it's kind of respected. Uh, they have started to, they had at one point a real uh, 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 issue with them being relevant and their relevancy. They've now, said, guys are saying it was outdated, yeah? Yeah, it was outdated a bit. And I think that they've since kind of updated things and, and tried to bring it up more to speed what's going on with relevancy. It was definitely one of the things I liked about EJPT. It was very straight, but it wasn't a CTF. It was, here is basically a, 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 what may very well be what it looks like for you on your first pen testing engagement. They've got a web application. They've got this. They've got that. And you've got to try to use the skills that we've taught you to answer questions that only you would be able to answer if you did it correctly, right? I like that. So it's it's not like, what I don't like about the CTF thing is they're trying to catch you out. Yeah. Whereas this sounds like it's more like um, perhaps like what, you, like you said, you'd encountered in the real world, you have certain yeah. tools. It's not like just to try and, it's not a gotcha or trying right. to get you. A lot of exams are trying to, uh, or at least it seems like it to me. Trip you up, yeah. It's like they're trying to test you on how well you take a test. Yeah, which is pointless. Which is, that's this is not the job. The no. job is, do you understand these technologies? Are you familiar with X, Y, or Z tool? Maybe not to the point that, you know, maybe it's just a basic familiarity. Maybe it's a little more in depth that you understand the switches and where you would use uh, different things within that tool set to accomplish a goal. And that's fine, but don't make it to where it's like, was it port? You know, eight eight three nine or eight eight three eight. Oh, that's why we have. That's why we have Google. I right. Mean, come on. That's exactly right. That's why we have Google. That's why I'd love to see all certifications just be practical at one point. With here's a Google screen. Here's the machines. Yeah. If you can do the job, then you can do the job. Not the. So idea. I need to. I, I I need to push you because yeah. I, I I've got like this loop that I have to close. If you could only choose one cert, what would it be? And I'm sorry to push you. It's just your opinion. Again. Yeah, just my. Opinion. What would you choose? Man. Yeah. You, you're on. You're stuck on an island. You, you, the only way off. The only way off is to choose one cert. What if I, if I'm going to go with one cert, I'm going to go EJPT. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, I that's, think eLearn Security has really done the right thing. Like their their philosophy on the certification. I, I'm amazed you you didn't say OSCP. I, I don't say OSCP because uh, well, I, there there are so many different factors that you you have to kind of boil it down to. I'm gonna. I'm going to try to cast as wide a net as possible. OSC you know, I mean, uh, Daniel, it's your opinion. Yeah, so you o can say whatever you like. OSCP yeah. to me does not cast that net. It's a much more, right? And as you move up the rung, even in e security, those nets are going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. 
you're you're working on very specific skill sets for and having a very broad prerequisite set of skills so that you can move into that. So the the focus starts to narrow as you move up in difficulty and things of that nature. So OSCP to me is a little more like if you had EJPT, that would be a great precursor to moving into the OSCP and then taking OSCP exam and going, okay, I'm not, I'm not starting from jump street and trying to work my way up. So again, I'm, I, if, if you're trying to hem me into a path, I would go something like, I would say something like security plus, then maybe like CEH or pen test plus, and then EJPT, if, if I'm building a perfect world here. Uh, and then OSCP, and then back to like ECPPT, then maybe back to OSCE, um, yeah, that kind of stuff. And, and, and starting to work that way, and the man, uh, EWPTX, the um, extreme web, uh, or they've got the, there's so many, they, they got these acronyms, they're crazy. <laughs> you, you're talking about like the um, offsec, um, like the wireless yeah. uh, so stuff. So they, yeah. they have wireless, and then eLearn Security has their penetration tester extreme version two, I think is their oh, okay. version. Uh, which is extremely hard. Then you've got like um, GPEN. You think about SANS; they have certifications as well. Uh, at the uh, what I yeah, it's 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 tough because I mean like it, it is. I mean, I'm, I'm I'm pushing you. It's a hot and, seat. And when you start tough. talking about the value, I think that's the really yeah. What w- what's the value? Yeah. Is yeah. the certification is, is going to have some value itself? But the real to me, right? This is my opinion. Is then you take it or leave it. To me, the the real value comes in the training and the experience you get with that training. And that's why when I teach CEH, one of the major things I heard and experienced when I took CEH was, man, they just, they turn a fire hose on and they hammer you with all this theory and concepts and tools and you got to just all this stuff. And then I'm like, uh, someone turns around and says, now you teach CEH. And I go, okay, well, now that it's my baby, I'll do it the way I want. I'll do it the way I think would be most effective. And that's why when you watch my CEH class, it's not just a fire hose and a deluge. We're going to get our hands dirty. We're going to apply these things. I also have like, you know, methodology classes. Like I, I built a hands-on hacking series where, hey, let's take all those things we learned in CEH or that maybe we're getting ready to take CEH or OSCP or EJPT or whatever cer- certification that's on that Red Teach side of things. And let's see how we work our way through. Let's, how, let's build a good methodology that's going to help us be successful in those exams. So then they apply to everything instead of just, oh, this is the CEH training. You take my pen test plus, it's going to be the same thing. I'm not just going to say, well, here's the the problem with SQL injection is that you're allowing the execution (laughs) of transact SQL in the back end through yada, 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 and these mechanisms. Not that you don't need to know that. We go through that. And then I go, now let's do it. Let's, Let's spin something up. Here's my web application right here. And uh, yeah, this is this is fun. Here's the one you'll see. One equals one. Uh, oh look, that worked. But how do we get at the database? How do we get? How, how do we? How do we make this a little, a little more? Point out? Okay, let's keep going down the rabbit hole. Let's start with I. How do I find a SQL injection? How do I exploit a SQL injection? How do I use SQL injection to gain access to the database? How do I use that access to then gain access to the system itself? Maybe getting even a shell back from the system all through one concept, which was SQL injection. So um, just just to make sure I understand, that's a course that you've created that's part of yeah. IT Pro TV, yeah? Absolutely, yes. And what what is it called again? That would be CEH. We do, oh, that's CEH, yeah, okay. We do you, that in CEH, we do that in Pentest Plus. My course- So in other words, you, you've you taken the, um, sorry to interrupt, you've yeah. taken the, the certs like Pentest Plus or Security Plus or CH, right. and you've kind of like made it practical if you like, in Absolutely. that you, you're demonstrating stuff rather than just talking about it. I've looked at some of the security stuff, um, like uh, Security Plus, and like the books and some of the materials out there. And it's like just concept after concept after concept. It's like after like an hour of that, you, you're like bored out of your mind. So oh. I'm really glad to hear what you've done. Yeah, you know, that came from me having the exact same experience as that going, I cannot stay engaged with this. This is death by PowerPoint. Oh yeah, I mean. man, we've all been there, and we've all had to come back from the brink of like going. Oh, I, I'm I'm ready to just toss in the towel. This is this is not fun. It's terrible. Right? Yeah. Right. Why 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 can't it be fun? Why can't it be? Hey, run over to Vulnhub, grab this vulnerable machine, and let's do this stuff that we're talking about here. 